Hey guys, Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, today we're going to talk about mastering. How to do a simple mastering in Cubase 9. Now, my number one rule when it comes to mastering is if you're recording your own songs, mixing your own songs, I would suggest you to send your songs to a mastering engineer. Okay, this is going to give you an extra set of years on your production. It's always, you know, it's always good to work with somebody else as far as mastering goes when you're recording your own songs, mixing and producing your own songs. This is what I do on my side, and uh, this is what I suggest you to do. So that's my number one rule. Now, the reason why I want to show you this today, it's because it's always good to know how mastering works and how to do a simple mastering in your DAW. So today I'm going to show you a very simple way of doing mastering in Cubase 9. Now, you can do this in any DAW. For most of the tutorial, I'm going to use stock plugins. So you can do everything with stock plugins out of your DAW. And on top of that, I'm going to show you uh, some paid plugins and uh, a free plugin that you can get as well. Now, my number two rule when it comes to mastering, make sure when you mix your song, you get to the maximum mixing quality, okay, uh, before you send that to mastering, whatever you're mastering that song or uh, or not, you know, or you send that to an, a mastering engineer. You need to make sure that the production and the mix itself sounds pretty good. This is going to bring your life easier when it comes to mastering. Since the mastering stage is the last stage of music production, you know, whatever you master needs to be top notch. All right, guys, so let's start this up. First, I'm going to do this in Cubase. You can actually use a software like uh, WaveLab. WaveLab is a very good uh, software for mastering. There's a lot of stuff you can do in WaveLab uh, as far as mastering goes, but I'm going to use Cubase. So first, what I do for mastering, I always set my uh, my project setup to 32-bit float, okay? So I bring that to a maximum bit resolution when it comes to mastering, and I keep the sample rate as it was um, on the mixing stage. Now, some will up-sample to 96K. It's up to you, but, I, you know, I keep it at, like for this one, I mixed it at 48, uh, so I just kept it at 48, okay? Um, now... If I master several songs, let's say I'm mastering for an EP or a full album, um, you know, I set myself up a template with all of the plugins and I make sure after I'm done with one song that I copy all of my plugins to some extra tracks that I add up into the project. Now, I have my single track here, okay, where I'm going to insert all of my plugins and I have the stereo out right here, where I have some other plugins. Now, these plugins will not affect the sound. Um, my first plugin here that I have on my stereo out, my stereo bus is the, uh, from uh, Sample Magic, is the Magic AB when I do some referencing. I think it's a very good idea to use a reference track during mastering, just to make sure you're in the ball game as far as tone goes and uh, and stuff like that. You know, and sometimes it's going to be your client that will send you a song that you can use as a mastering reference. So I use uh, Magic AB. Uh, from Sample Magic to reference my track. Now, if you don't have uh, Magic AB, you can simply just add a um, an extra track, okay, in your session. You know, leave it, leave that blank without any inserts, without any plugins, and use that to play your uh, your reference track. Okay, that's simple. Next, what I have, I have a VU meter. Now, I'm going to show you how I set that up for mastering later on. Next, I have a free plugin from Voxengo called Span. Okay, this is a graphic analyzer. It's free. You can go get it. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. All right, so these plugins are directly on the master bus, okay, on my stereo out. Now, these will not affect my sound. Now, on each track, what I have here, I'm going to start by using a compressor, okay? Um, let's first have a listen to the mix we have of this song.
Okay, first I'm gonna open my compressor. Okay, I'm gonna use the stock plugin out of Cubase. Okay, now this is not my favorite compressor to uh, to do mastering, but you know, uh, if I want to just use um, some tools within the uh, my DAW, I'm gonna you know use the uh, the the compressor that comes with it. Now in this case, that's the one in Cubase, and the way I set that up, uh, my starting point is um, I get to a ratio of 1.5 to one, um, so which is a very low ratio. Now my attack time is gonna be at around 20 milliseconds. Now this is my start point. I don't wanna get it too fast of an attack. I don't wanna kill the punch of the song. I wanna let the transients uh, through. And the, my release time, I keep that very smooth at you know around 475, 500 milliseconds. Now again, this will depend on the tempo of the song. So this is my starting point and I go from there. Then I try to get a gain reduction of one, two dBs, you know, maybe three maximum, but I'm gonna tend to be uh, between one and two dB of uh, gain reduction. So let's listen to what it does here. Okay, I get a bit more control, so that's pretty good. Um, again, in mastering, you know, everything is subtle, okay? Uh, all small changes you do, you know, it looks a bit subtle when you play it with the settings of, like, for example, the compressor. You know, it's very tiny moves that I do, but it shows a lot. You can hear quite a difference when you apply it to it, you know, the song in general, opposed to an individual track in the mixing stage. Um, and you'll see that when I'm gonna use the, uh, the equalizer, okay? All tiny moves, all subtle moves, but in the end, it adds a lot, okay? So now if I go down to my, uh, my equalizer, okay? I'm gonna open Frequency, which again is a stuck plugin. And this is what I did here as far as the EQ goes. So I have a small cut here at around um, 250 or so. And uh, like maybe like 1.9, I think, or 2 dBs or so. Yeah, 2 dBs at, you know, 274 hertz. I have another cut at around 440 um, hertz at, you know, same, same type of cut, you know, around 2.1 dB. Um, yeah, on this one, and I have another very tiny cut, a 0.8 dB cut at 7.30, okay, uh, right here. Um, then if we go to the top end uh, side of the frequency spectrum, again, very tiny boosts, 1.3 dBs in average for each of them. So, you know, everything is very subtle when you're, uh, you're you know, applying EQ on a... Uh, um, on a mastering session, okay? So if, you're, if your song is well balanced, well mixed, you know, this is the type of uh, EQ moves you're gonna do very subtle and very effective. So let's um, listen to a before and after, okay? I'm gonna just bypass the plugin, listen to the song, and then bring back the plugin in, and we'll hear the difference. So it sounds way more open. Very subtle moves, but very effective. Now, the next plugin here that I have that is a stock plugin as well is my brick wall uh, limiter, which is a maximizer here. Now, um, this is where we're gonna work the loudness part of the song. And this is when I'm gonna use my VU meter. Now, um, I, I set that up to minus 10. Uh, dBFS to calibrate my VU meter. So the zero VU is about minus 10 dBFS. That's a trick I got from uh, my good friend Ian Shepard. That is a very good mastering engineer and Ian has a lot of resources regarding loudness. Okay. I'm gonna leave some links in the uh, description below of some articles Ian wrote about loudness, okay? So by calibrating that VU meter at minus 10, um, it's gonna get me a very good idea of the, um, of the best loudness 
uh, I can bring my song to, you know. Now, when it comes to loudness, you know, what you need to remember is the louder you bring your master at, the less dynamic range you're going to end up with, okay? And this is going to affect the quality of the song, okay? So you need to pay attention to that. Now, the quieter the song, the more dynamic you will get. So this is a very important part that we need to pay attention to. Okay, so I'm going to set that up to minus 10. I'm going to calibrate my VU meter to minus 10, and I'm going to aim zero VU as far as the loudness goes. Okay, I'm going to bring that to zero for now and I'm going to show you what it does. Okay, pretty cool. So, you know, I think that's loud enough for this song. Um, now, my settings here on uh, on this maximizer, I, I just selected the classic mode. Uh, now, I have my output here, okay, uh, that is set to minus 0.3. So, basically, what that does is right here on my master out, it's not going to go above 0.3. Uh, DBFS. Okay, it's going to stick below that point. Okay, everything above that will be compressed. Okay, now my mix knob is at 100%, and I just play with the optimized percentage here. So the higher you bring your optimized percentage, the louder it gets. Let's listen to that again and pay attention here to uh, this part of the plugin. This is the signal that gets cut off. Okay, that gets compressed. Got an invitation. Now, there's a lot of other stuff you can do in mastering, but I would just want to keep that simple for this video. I just want to give you the tools to be able to do a simple mastering within your DAW. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're pr producing your own music, mixing your own music, I would suggest you to put a bit of money aside and send that to a mastering engineer. But again, it's always good to know how to do a simple mastering in your DAW. So there you go, guys. This is it for today. I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or uh, questions, you can leave them below and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe if you're not already. All right, I'll see you next time.